Welcome to another Straight the Pilot video helping you learn fast about flying. I'm sorry there's not been any videos recently. It's been a very, very busy period of my life. Been moving house, hence the new study type thing that we've got going here. So this is where all the videos will be filmed from now on. It's pretty bare behind me. I'm going to start putting some shelves and stuff behind me with things that are very, very important to me or things I'm very proud of. The first thing, the tenant's gold can. That's going to be the first thing to go up there. But yeah, I guess as time goes on, this room will get you know, sort of more and more stuff. Today we are talking about how to take off an airplane. Taking off is one of the first milestones you'll hit when you're training. It's, uh, it's something I still remember my first takeoff. I sat down and my instructor says, right, come on, this plane's not going to take off itself. Let's get going. And I was like, what? Okay, yeah, yeah, I think I know what I'm doing. Yeah, power, uh, this, this. And then we took off and the lift it gives you, uh, metaphorically and physically, was amazing. You know, you've taken off an airplane, you dream of it your whole life and you've done it and you will get there so soon if you're just starting out. First thing to do entering the runway, do your entering the runway check. For me, that is my ATPL. So anti-collision light on, transponder to alt or mode Charlie. P is for fuel pump, make sure the fuel pump's on. It will probably be on already if you've done your power checks properly. And L, landing light, make sure your landing light's on. Use as much runway as possible. Taxi right to the end of the runway if you're backtracking or if you're lining up, use as much runway as possible. There's no point having any runway behind you. If you do have a problem on takeoff, it gives you more and more distance to either stop or if you've just taken off, you can then land again if you've noticed T's and P's are high or your oil pressure is high or something like that. Use as much the runway as possible. Can't stress that enough. Have I turned my mic on? Yes, I have. So you're lined up with the centre line. Then next thing, make sure that the numbers on your compass are reading the same numbers as what's on the runway. So if it's runway 24 and there's a big 24 painted on the runway, Make sure that's what it says in the compass as well. Okay, nose wheel straight, two, four, two, four. And the last thing is make sure you know what the wind's doing. So if there's a crosswind from the left, you're correcting for that. Speak to your instructor about how to do that if you don't already know. The next thing to do is to add some power. Now, whatever your instructor tells you is the right thing to do. Some people have their feet on the brakes to go full power and then release. For me at five, and it was me and my instructor in, we would just go feet off the brakes, Slow movement of the throttle over a three count. So one, two, three, I still do it now. It just allows the plane to build up gradually. You should never move the throttle in a, a rough motion. You should never go from nothing to full power quickly. I think there's a chance you can flood the engine. I'm not really sure, should probably look it up. Then you'll start going down the runway. The plane will want to turn left because of the, can't remember the technical term. The prop spinning one way, it's pushing the tail out to the right. You're gonna wanna turn left, you need to correct that with right rudder. Don't put full right rudder in, start with while you're putting full power in. Let the plane want to turn a wee bit left and just correct. Some planes will want to turn more aggressive than others on the runway. Just as it, as you feel it going left, just slightly press the right rudder to keep you straight on the center line. You should never be veering off to the right or veering off to the left. Then all you're looking at when you're going down the runway or all I look at going down the runway is center line. T's and P's are in the green. Center line, airspeed's coming alive. Center line, T's and P's are in the green, center line, airspeed's coming alive. You'll have a speed you want to rotate at. For me in a warrior, it's 55, 60 knots. I'm not rotating unless my T's and P's are all in the green. Talk about T's and P's, temperatures and pressures, making sure everything is reading correctly. Any sign that something's wrong, pull the power back, feet on the brakes. And your eyes flickering constantly between center line, T's and P's. Don't, don't go center line, T's and P's, airspeed, because by the time you look back at the center line, you could be off it. So everything comes back to center line, T's and P's in the green. Center line, airspeed's coming alive. Center line, full power. Center line, airspeed. You're just constantly checking these things and everything's going correctly. You know that 55, 60 knots for me in a warrior, that's when you rotate. You rotate very gently. It's not, a, it's not an aggressive pull back. It's just gentle back pressure. The plane will want to fly itself. So you're just helping it off the ground. And then you're looking for your climb speed, whether you're climbing at VX or VY. From then on, speak to your instructor of what he wants you to do in terms of your after takeoff checklist. Um, but that is how I take off. Big tip, if you take nothing else from this video, just constantly move your eyes between the center line, T's and P's, center line, airspeed's alive. Center line, T's and P's, center line, airspeed. Just constantly flick between all that and you won't go far wrong. On the runway, no feel straight. 2424. Copy, I can't do it taking off on my 24. 
Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. It really helps me out. Subscribe if you aren't already. Any questions, drop them in the comments box below and I'll see you on the next video.